Hello and welcome to another tutorial in the series in which I introduce you to freely available high quality research tools for biblical studies. What you see here in front of me is the Logos Bible software. It's a tool that I use on a daily basis. I cannot replace it uh, for good reasons. I have a fully fledged library here. I have the um, BDAC dictionary for Greek. I have the Hello dictionary for Hebrew and Aramaic. I have a lot of high quality commentaries here from the Hemen ASA, from the Anchor Bible Yale dictionary and the Anchor Yale. Um, Bible, Ankle Yale, Bible Commentary Series, the World Bible Commentary Series, all the critical editions of the German Bible Society. So a lot of tools that I have here uh, in Logos installed and I rely on it. But, and this is my point, I'm using Logos and if I were an Accordance user, also Accordance basically just as a powerful digital library in which all the data is created in a very efficient way. Everything is hyperlinked. Um, I can maneuver through my digital library in a smooth, efficient way. And that's really the power of a commercial Bible software. So I'm not trying to argue that you can work well without a digital library. You need a digital library. However, for research, for research purposes, that means if I'm running linguistic queries, I will not use Accordance nor Logos because its abilities are very limited when it comes to actually carrying out research. For that, I will use Text Fabric. So the purpose of this tutorial is to show you how far you can get in replacing professional Bible software. And uh, for that purpose, I'm going to open up the Step Bible. I have showed you another tutorial how to install the Step um, Bible of the Tyndall House. It's a brilliant project. Uh, you have seen me how I'm running it on my local machine. So here we go. We, uh, you see the Step Bible run on my local machine here as a local host. I have set up all my uh, Bible verses in a way that looks similar here to my Logos installation. VHS on the left. The translation, ESV translation here in the center and then the Greek New Testament on the right and the same we have here freely available locally on my machine. The data is also stored locally on my machine so I don't need an internet connection in order to work with these types of texts. So if I were to go here to Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, you see that everything is linked here with the Hebrew text. And if I were to go to, for example, Matthew chapter 1, everything is here linked with the SBLGNT text on the right. Okay, good. But that's just the biblical text. What I now need is a research environment in which I can query these texts. For that purpose, obviously, I'm running my terminal here. Uh, and um, we could first run here the web app text fabric web app of the BHS. And let's also start here the um, text fabric web app for the Greek New Testament. Alrighty, here we have them. So let's uh, move them to the right. What you now see is we have uh, two texts, the BHS text, could look them up uh, here and uh, start writing writing queries. I can, you know, look up the, the entire text and tactical, syntactical and also text and tactical structure of my, my text. The same here with the uh, Greek New Testament. Um, I can uh, look into the details of each text. But the real powerful thing uh, here is that on the left, we have, you could say the search environment on the right, we have just the library environment, I could run here, obviously queries uh, now as for example, find me just a simple query now, word lex is Yotaviha Arunai, and then we run it, and uh, here we get the, the results, right? We could uh, run much more sophisticated queries that are really not possible to carry out in accordance and logos if we were to go full fledged syntax. Um, just a simple one phrase function is subject. Now we find all the cases in which Yahweh is the subject in the Old Testament. Uh, you see here that we have uh, the doing of Adonai Elohim, the heavens and the earth. So we could uh, now further reduce, uh, obviously, um, the subject phrase by only having Yahweh in the subject position, not Yahweh Elohim. We'll do that simply by adding a further restriction to this. Let's call this phrase one and this word one. And and we do P1. Word 1. So run this query. And what you see now see, we only have Yahweh as the only 
let's see the only lemma within the subject phrase uh, and it raised Adonai for kind a sign okay so this is really a powerful uh, setup now there's one thing missing um, you you do have a good dictionary here with a step Bible um, but it's still it's still limited uh, you see when, when you click on a word you obviously get uh, the morphological analysis noun com plural masculine absolute um, but uh, yeah in, in a very standard uh, simple dictionary entry heaven or here then uh, more sophisticated or more elaborate uh, dictionary but it's still it's still not comparable to you know Hallett or, or BDAC you can get however quite close to this when you open the marble project so I have introduced you to the marble project by the United Bible Society marble bible i think dot bible in another tutorial here we go so it's handy to have this window open as well you have here the bibla hebraica stuttgartensia text available um you see also here you can click and get uh, you know the dictionary entry form um, but the beautiful thing here is that uh, you can actually get access to the semantic dictionary of the Old Testament of uh, sorry the semantic dictionary of Hebrew biblical Hebrew and uh, Aramaic and here you have really a full-fledged powerful uh, dictionary that uh, provides you much more information than when you were to look just uh, at um, what's the word here that we're looking up Rashid so if we were to click here you see you just have a very basic um, overview on the potential meanings but the Semantic Dictionary of the Hebrew Bible is much more sophisticated, provides you with statistical information, uh, really goes deep into the semantic domains in, in which uh, the word resho, uh, rosh here, is um, being used in the Old Old Testament. So that's a very, very good uh, tool that you could um, access via the Marble uh, Bible, and it would make, to some extent, your Hallot and Bedak uh, dictionaries um, well, not obsolete, but it could cover most of what Talat and Bidak can offer to you. We also have the Launida based dictionary here in the Marble Bible, so also high quality dictionary that uh, the Marble Project offers. You can uh, see Os, for example. Here we go. You can click on Theos, and then you see you have a very, very extensive description of Theos. It's based on the Lao Nida dictionary, so something that comes very close to the uh, BDUC dictionary as well. Um, so this is the setup that I can suggest to you. Um, freely available, high quality resources, allowing you much more powerful query solutions than Logos could ever offer. Um, Obviously, Accordance would fall into the same category. Neither Logos nor Accordance can match the powerful research abilities that Text Fabric can uh, offer to you. Um, in addition to the search capabilities, you want to have a strong dictionary available to you that you can rely on here. I highly advise you the marble.bible project where you have the semantic dictionary of the Hebrew Bible available as well as the Launida based semantic dictionary of the Greek New Testament. The BHS text that you see here in the commercial Bible software of Logos is without text critical apparatus, I must say, that is under license, so no text critical apparatus for you available in the free web tools. But anyway, you can get the same BHS text here, it's based on the ETCBC BHSA. Um, you can have that available here either in Text Fabric, as you see on the on the left, uh, this is your BHSA text. Um, you can have it available in the Marble Bible Project, the official BHSA text uh, here, or you can, and uh, you have seen tutorials uh, on my site on this project as well, um, you can use Shebunk, which probably has the most fancy way of um, showing you the Biblia Hebraica Stuttgartensia text in its ETCPC version. It does not only show you, you know, the morphological entries and the syntactical analysis, it can also actually uh, show you the text syntactical uh, structure 
of uh, each text. You see here the indent indentations being made available. So this is my setup that I would highly recommend if you don't have Logos nor Accordance but have to rely on the library functions here of a university, in our case Andrews University. You still need um, a powerful research engine that allows you to query Biblical Hebrew and Biblical Greek texts for your exegesis projects. Uh, and in order to run smoothly and uh, efficiently, I hi highly recommend you have your locally installed Step Bible available and can run easy read or can allow yourself for an easy reading of the Hebrew text, the ESV translation, and the Greek text. Um, at the moment, you want to dig a little deeper into understanding the text and tactical structure or you want to access more sophisticated dictionaries. At that moment, you need to rely on internet connection in order to get access to the Marble Bible as well as to the Shibank platform. I hope that was uh, helpful. This is the best that I can see at the moment in 2025 um, when it comes to replacing your Logos or Accordance installation. Again, assuming you have a powerful library close at hand, be that here the James White Library at Andrews University or any other library, academic library that is available in your uh, city. That function, that function of Logos or Accordance to offer a digital library to you can obviously not be replaced by any of the free tools here. The only thing that can get replaced, I think that got clear, is the search capabilities, the research capabilities, they can be not just replaced, they surpass to a great extent the capabilities of Accordance and Logos. I'm hopeful this was a meaningful tutorial and uh, it will assist you in carrying out your research. See you next time.